Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at a battery many of you are already very familiar with. This is the 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Ampere Time. And I wasn't going to review this battery at first because of how popular it already is. However, they had asked a couple of times, so I figured, sure, why not? Uh, and this will likely be the last 12 volt battery review video for a little while. I have some big things coming up in June. There'll be a lot of projects going on, a lot of exciting stuff happening. So I fully expect this will be a quick review, so let's get to it. You know, there are quite a few batteries on the market that look very similar. They come in the same cases, similar specifications, they are packed and shipped the same way. Uh, so one thing I try to look for in many of these batteries are things that are different and things that set either the battery apart from the others or the company apart from the others. And one thing I noticed in particular with Ampere Time is, is they included this uh, plastic pouch with a zipper and it's got quite a few manuals in here. Uh, so we've got the product manual for the battery. We've got a product brochure of other batteries and products they sell. We've got a quick operations guide with some basic instructions and safety information. And then we have a larger guide with some product information, safety information, and other things about the company. So taking a look at the manual, we can see some of the basic specifications. Again, it's a 100 amp hour battery. Recommended charge current is 20 amps. The max continuous charge and discharge are both 100 amps. The max surge discharge is 280 amps for up to five seconds. And we can charge this battery when it's above freezing and we can discharge it all the way down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, this battery supports up to four connected in series for a 48 volt nominal system. Though honestly, if you're going to build out a 48 volt system, I would just purchase a 48 volt battery at this point but it is good to know the specification for series connections. Uh, and then it explains a little bit on balancing if you're going to do that. So there's not a whole lot to see on the front here. We've got the brand name, 12 volt, 100 amp hour, uh, their website, that's about it. Taking a look at the top, we can see this case is near identical to many of the other batteries we have reviewed. Uh, we have the same epoxy style terminals with M8 bolts. And like some of the other batteries, this did come with four bolts of the same size for some reason. I'm not quite sure why they've been doing that. Um, and then two plastic terminal caps. And then once again, we have what appears to be a serial number in the top left corner. Again, it's the same sticker as some of the other batteries with just a different font. And just for comparison, I also have the lids here from the EnjoyBot battery uh, and the Zooms battery. So you can see they are very similar stickers, just different fonts and different colors. And we're charging at approximately 40 and a half amps. All right, so I've got my standard capacity testing setup connected here, which is a 2000 watt inverter with some incandescent light bulbs connected as a load, a batrium shunt to measure the amount of current, and I've got an Android display over here showing the voltage amperage wattage, discharged amp hours, and discharged watt hours. As usual, our goal is to get around a 0.2 C rate on a 100 amp hour battery. That's approximately 20 amps. All right, so we're discharging right around 22 amps. We'll leave this run until the BMS in the battery shuts it off, and then we'll see what our measured capacity is. All right, and we came in at 104.67 amp hours. Pretty good. All right, so as typical for this case, this is glued along the top here. Um, so I'm going to have to use the hammer and putty knife method to get it open, hopefully. All right, guys, the cases of many of these batteries may look the same, but... Uh, I can assure you that they are not always assembled the same. In fact, they are very rarely assembled the same. Uh, for example, this one was like glued down with this rubber adhesive. It wasn't the standard glue. It wasn't silicone. Uh, I don't even know what it was. You can see some remnants of it over here. It's very rubbery. Uh, but that was difficult as heck to get open. So uh, the main positive lead here is a number six gauge silicone insulated wire, 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating. Our negative lead is a set of three 10 gauge silicone insulated wires coming from the main terminal down to the BMS. And then I see there are three more here coming off of the BMS going to the main negative of the battery. All right, this is packed very well with foam on all sides, but it does not appear to be glued down. So I think I can simply pull it out. Let's see here. So you can really see here how they have this whole thing encapsulated in foam. That way it's protected on all sides. It's actually done very well, and I haven't seen one uh, done this well with foam, in my opinion. All right, so one thing I noticed is the foam they had here was positioned properly such that there was not a piece of foam stuck to the vent, and the vents were not obstructed. 
And some of the batteries I've taken apart, the manufacturer has stuck things over the vent. So when you try to remove it, it either pulls up the vent or in some way obstructs the vent. Um, I doubt that would prevent proper operation, but uh, again, it's an attestment to build quality showing that they took care not to obstruct the vents when they applied that foam. Additionally, I see something in this battery that I have not seen in any other batteries I've taken apart so far. And that is that every single cell here has a sticker on it with a tested capacity down to a tenth decimal place. So they must have tested and matched these cells. For example, this sticker says 106,332.4 milliamp hours. So we have 106.3 amp hours, 106.3 amp hours, 106.0 amp hours, and we have 106.5 amp hours. So we do have an original QR code on these batteries. And I see it begins with 04Q, which is usually an indication of an EVE brand cell. Uh, and 320 watt hours. So these are 100 amp hour cells. Um, this is not a particular form factor I have seen before. However, I do believe these are EVE cells to the best of my knowledge. So we can see how the battery pack is held together here. There are two of these plastic straps applied. Uh, they don't appear to be very tight, so they are not compressing the cells. Once again, they are simply holding them into place. Again, with some corner guards here to prevent these straps from squeezing in and indenting the corners of the cells. And we see they are separated by a piece of epoxy board at each location here. Other than that, other than that, uh, there is no foam spacing or anything between them. They do appear to be new grade A cells. They are all flat. I don't see any signs of bloating or anything like that. Taking a look at the construction of the battery pack, we have aluminum uh, bus bars here. They are laser welded into place, and the laser welds appear to be done very, very nicely. They do have the standard hump for expansion in the middle should the battery pack expand for any reason, either normal or fault conditions. The balance leads are terminated with a ring terminal, some heat shrink, and I see they do have them screwed down to the bus bar, which is good to see. And there does appear to be a lock washer and a flat washer under each one. And then they have some silicone uh, adhesive just covering it. Looking at the main connection points for the positive and negative here. And they have a bolt hole here where there is what appears to be an M6 size bolt holding down the main terminal. Again with a flat washer and a lock washer and then some silicone adhesive. Both of these are bent quite a bit. I'm not sure why they are bent, if that was an accident or intentional. Taking a look at the BMS, this does appear to be a similar BMS as we've seen on other batteries. It is model number HLT4S100A. And looking at the lettering on the switch, I can see this thermal switch engages at 75 degrees Celsius. So knowing that, we can conclude this battery most likely does not have low temperature charge protection. Uh, and the company does not advertise that, so that's not a problem. It only becomes a problem when the company advertises it and it doesn't work. That's not a fail point in my book. It's just something that the customer needs to be aware of when they're purchasing a battery. So one thing I noticed here with the main negative connection is that uh, they have the lug on top of the balance lead ring terminal, then on the main negative. Now, in my personal opinion, that is done incorrectly, and this lug should have been directly on top of this, and then the balance lead on top of the lug. Um, and I pointed that out in one of the other batteries I reviewed, and some people said that this was fine as is. And then the balance lead here uh, had a little mishap when I was removing it. Uh, so they had the silicone adhesive holding this connector in place done so well, um, I couldn't pull it out. I had taken a razor knife here and tried to slice through the adhesive above the terminal, which is what I usually do to pull these off, and apparently I was down a little bit too low. And I sliced right through all of these wires, so uh, that was my bad. All right, so taking a look at this BMS, they do have a layer of epoxy board between the BMS and the cell. All right, so I don't see any brand information or anything to identify this BMS on the top or the bottom. I have the exact same BMS from when I took apart the Zooms battery. Had to go back through my videos to see where this came from, and this was indeed from the Zooms battery. So if we remove this cover here, Again, we have another thermal switch in here situated right between the FET transistors. Uh, that way this will shut down if these transistors get too hot. And uh, the part number on these transistors is 170N08BS. Here's another part number. I'm not sure. Maybe this is relevant to identifying what BMS this is. This is HLT-922A. And at the top here we can see the resistors used for the passive balancing and the transistors that will turn these resistors on and off if the battery needs to balance any particular cell. All right guys, so there you go. This battery tested out pretty good. The last thing to touch on is always the price. 
This battery sells for $399 both on Amazon and Ampere Time's own website. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a link to both of those locations down in the video description. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or want to share your experience with this battery if you have one, please feel free to leave that in the comment section below. Otherwise, hit that like button before you go. It does make a big difference to the video and the channel, and thanks for watching.